Hi, my name is Suzanne. I'm from TVMeg.com. How are you? Hi, Suzanne. Hi, how are, how you? are you? Good, good. Uh, see, uh, Barbara, how, how did this role come about for you? Well, my husband was writing the, the series uh, uh, Las Azules when I was cooking for him. <laughs> so, um, uh, he was he was writing this um, this show to to work together as well and and you know um, this is something that he, um, occurs to him no so he occurs. came up with yeah he came up with um, and he invited me so I was very blessed that having that invitation and I am very happy because Maria is a role that is very inspired in, in the way I am as well. And, um, and I really like the character and the opportunity. Right, yeah, no, it's yeah. a great, great show. I was watching it last night. I really enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's very unusual and I love the 70s uh, styles and the cars and all that. It's really yeah. great. Thank you. <laughs> um, Fernando, how much of this story is based on history and reality and how much is fiction? Well, um, Okay, so, so in 1971, there was an attempt uh, by the police to do a, 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 women in the, a, a female police uh, unit, and this female police unit, uh, mm -hmm. they, it was open to, to women all over the city, and when these women joined, um, it's true that once they joined, they were told that they were not going to get guns, that they were not going to be allowed to investigate, that they were not going to be allowed to make any arrests, that they were going to wear miniskirts, and knee-high boots, and that they were going to be stuck in the park, uh, basically guiding and directing tourists, um, in an attempt for the for the people to <clears throat> get to regain the trust of the police, and for the people to to see that the police had changed, and that Mexico was was going through like a new progressive, you know, future thinking um, phase, which was not true. Um, but a lot of these women, once they found out that about the that they were being sort of used as a marketing stunt, um, some of them were, were hugely disappointed. But fortunately, most of them stayed in the police, and they and they stuck around in spite of everything because they knew that if they if they left, somehow it would be pinned on them. It would be their fault that they left. So they stayed and they stayed and they changed the system from within. And they and and slowly but surely, these women you know, earned a place in the, in the police department, earned a place, you know, among the detectives. Um, and, and, and now, you know, and, and the, the result that we have 50 years later is that obviously, I mean, thank God that they did because, because we have a woman in the presidency in Mexico. Right, and, right. and I believe that there is a line you can draw from, from the Azules to, to today. And uh, Barbara, when you uh, started in the show, did you do research about uh, this time and uh, how it was for women, or did you just go by what was on the page? Or yes, I did. I did a lot. I I I watched series in these uh, times, and um, I also read a book called *The Feminine Mystique* by Simone de Beauvoir mm -hmm. that sure. gave me a context. Um, you know, like a sense of the context on that uh, times. And also we, well, I spoke with the, the, the police officers, the first police female officers in Mexico, oh. and I interviewed them and to see how was that at that time being a police, uh, female police, and the first one and what, um, challenges they face and everything and it was uh very very interesting to to do all and to have all this information to to be able to create uh, to maria that's great you yeah. should have filmed it and then they could have put it on the dvd as an extra <laughs> yeah, yeah i would love to see that yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right <laughs> so um fernando tell me about the uh, the creation of the show and your part and how it occurred Yes. Um, well, uh, 
my co co creator in the show, Pablo Aramendi, a Spanish uh, screenwriter, he he came to me with the idea of making a movie about the first female police department, and um, we started digging into it. We started investigating, and we found that there was very little information, very very little official information about this group, and it seemed very strange because it seems like in Mexico there there there, there would have to be you know, a, a, a monument somewhere, a, a statue, uh, anything. And there's nothing, there's literally nothing. And we realize that when you find an important story such as this that hasn't been told, it's like, it's so exciting to, to begin digging into it. And so we, we, um, we pitched the show to Apple TV Plus. They immediately, you know, jumped on it and said, we love the idea, we lo where, where would you take it? And we started talking about the idea of, uh, of mixing this true story of these four women, mixing it with the fictional part, which is the serial killer part, because we wanted to bring in something from the present to the past. And in Mexico, um, the, tragically, there's you know over 3,000 women are murdered every year, um, and and we and we did want to cr sort of create the the symbol of the feminicides that we're living in now, and bring that to the 70s, and put our azules against the biggest threat we're facing right now in Mexico, which is that. And we we built the writer's room with some incredible writers. Wendy Reese, uh, an American writer who is fantastic. She's also an executive producer on the show and also wrote a few episodes. Silvia Jimenez, another Spanish, uh, tremendously talented writer. She wrote a couple of episodes. And we created this room where we also opened uh, you know, our minds and hearts to the actors and actresses. And like, you know, I spoke to Barbara many times about the character of Maria. I spoke to Natalia about Valentina, Amorita about Gabina, and we spoke to uh, Jimena about, uh, about Angeles. And, and I have to say, they are just as responsible for the characters as we are writing it because they gave us so many ideas and we, really, we really did create this together. And uh, the, we have the ending of the uh, season coming up. Do you know yet whether there'll be a season two and does the ending leave it open for a season two? Is there anything you can tell us about that? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I think the ending does leave uh, a, a window to, uh, that could that could absolutely lead to a season two. Um, it, it's uh, it's obviously op it's 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 closed enough for us to feel the satisfaction of the season, but it's uh, but it does open up a little something that if there's if there's enough um, love for the show in terms of, you know, the audience, uh, then I think that and, and Apple decides to to give us a second season. I think we know exactly where we would take it. So it we're, we're, so it's very exciting, uh, but we definitely wanted to close enough of the season for it to feel satisfying because I can I know that it can be very frustrating to be like what. Two more, like a year and a half. Well, what's going to happen? Like we didn't want to, we didn't want to do that, but we, but we did sort of a little bit of something. You'll see. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Bye bye.